Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Fanblade. Uh, you've come on a good day. It's truss rod day. Uh, we're going to put truss rods in these two necks and then glue the fingerboards on. The fingerboard for the short scale base is this one here, and I tested out a couple of different finishes. That's oil and that's super glue. I think I'll go with the super glue. It just looks a little bit nicer and it dried a lot quicker as well. Uh, I can work a lot faster with it, and it's a fine finish. Um, so that's going on that base there. And uh, we need to have a little talk about the fingerboard for the short scale guitar because I'm not 100% on th happy with this design. Uh, I think it looks a bit stupid uh, and it will take a lot of work to clean it up and then finish it and that's just a waste of time which I actually don't have that much ironically all that all this time spent at home and uh, that's going to... Uh, take up more time than it's worth for the result I don't feel that I'm going to get from it. So, if you watched yesterday's video, then you'll know that I got a whole lot of fingerboards. And this one here with the nail hole in just the wrong place is actually just perfect for a short scale guitar. So that's what I'm going to use. However, this is going to be the perfect opportunity to experiment with what to fill this with. Uh, I was thinking epoxy. I was thinking epoxy mixed with glitter. I was thinking maybe paint it with some glow-in-the-dark paint and then put epoxy over the top of that. We can experiment with a few things. Let me know in the comments what you want to see fill this inlay. Now, next. I have... Uh, just taking the opportunity to uh, plane down this one a bit, get that nice and flat. The uh, headstock is now close to its final depth. They want to be about 14 mil. Uh, uh, it's currently sitting at 16, so I've got a little bit of room to play with there. Uh, this one I couldn't put on the planer to do that with uh, because the grain's so curly. Uh, it was just tearing out. I, I planed up one, the, one of the sides for a flat reference point and just got so much tear out there. If I try to do that on the face of the headstock then it's just going to be an absolute nightmare so I will have to do this by hand. Um, part of the process of uh, doing this means that as you plane more off this area, this area gets bigger and your flat area here gets smaller. So you kind of have to take a piece off each side as you go to make sure that your headstock remains the right length and that your neck remains the right length and that the join between them is perfectly square and that's not too bad maybe two degrees off um, it's maybe two degrees off this one however is uh, a mile off uh, but again I'm gonna have to do all of that by hand after the fact now truss rods uh, this is a standard length base truss rod and it's of course it's far too long this is a standard length guitar truss rod, and of course it's far too long for that one. Luckily, uh, for those of you who saw my video where I dissected an old acoustic guitar for Halloween, uh, I have a short scale guitar truss rod, so we can just do that. Um, this is, is a little bit shorter than I would prefer, but it's still going to wind up in the neck pocket, it's still going to be... Uh, mechanically sound to do that and it'll still function as a truss rod uh, and of course that is just about perfect so these are the ones we're going to put in these are what we're going to put them in let's do it
Right, job done. Uh, let's have a little talk about what's just happened there. Um, what you've just seen is a case study in learning on the job. Uh, I've just learned that my camera dies after 24 and a half minutes. Sorry about that. Uh, secondly, uh, I learned that the back of the router guide acts as a handy place to fit my ear collection hose. That, it, what, that was never designed like that, I've never done that before, I'll be doing it all the time now. The, the third thing, and the, probably the most useful thing that I just learned, is that when you have a neck that's too short and you can't get a clamp on there and still have enough room for the router, you need to route right to the end of the neck, uh, I put that pin in my vise and just butted that edge up against it, and that just held it nice and securely. I could just push into it, it didn't move. Nice and stable. Um, I believe in traditional woodworking circles they would call that a bench dog, where you have a, a hole in the bench and you chuck a dowel in it so you can push your workpiece up against it to hold it there. Uh, I, I've never done that before, this isn't exactly a traditional woodworking workshop, but Ah, oh, it works so well. I'm really amazed. Uh, and thoroughly recommending it to all of you. Right, next thing. These necks are just going to sit there drying, although I do need to glue a couple of offcuts onto that one. So I'll do that in a second. Uh, but then I need to draw these necks because I don't have templates for these short scale necks. I need to work out uh, what the taper is going to be and I need to actually draw the whole things out full scale. So that's basically what I'm going to do now. I'm going to figure out what I'm doing with hardware and get more of an idea of what parts I've got to put on these things and how it's all going to fit together. I might also redraw the fiber string base neck, although I do have a drawing for this. Uh, I want to refine the design and just make it a little bit narrower there and maybe try and take some weight out of the headstock because I'm using different tuners this time. I can make the headstock smaller. So uh, now it is just a time of a case of taking the hardware and doing a redesign and making sure that I know what I'm doing so that I can do it properly. Yes. <laughs> Here's what we're looking at. Five string bass, short scale bass, short scale guitar. Uh, I've got the tapers worked out, I've got the neck widths uh, organised with 5mm of clearance from each string on each side. Uh, unfortunately, my collection of templates for headstocks no longer includes the shape that I actually want to use. Luckily, I've got old Yorick here, and I'll just clone him.
there's a couple of interesting things going on here. Uh, first of all, the tuners here are just... The whole headstock needs to be narrower to fit them all in. Uh, uh, on this one, the headstock needs to be that way just a little bit because uh, there's not a whole lot of... If that's the D string there, from where the hole's drilled to the edge of the headstock is about 3 mil. That's not enough. And there's heaps of room over here. That's got a uh, full 15 mil there. So this design can go that way a bit. Uh, this one, the 5 string, is just needs to be a little bit bigger for the same reason right on that spot. Uh, but that's fine, we've got room to move on the 5-string, uh, because here's the original 5-string template, and here's the one I just used. Uh, considerable size difference. That's what I'm after, I want that to be smaller. So, if this has to be slightly bigger, then that's still fine. So, yeah, like I say, this one shifted that way, and this one just reduced a little bit. Uh, also worth noting, I measured the measured the actual workpiece that we have to work with on the short scale guitar and it's 160 mil which is which is there so that gets chopped off so this will need a redesign to make it a bit smaller this needs a redesign to move it over and that needs a redesign to make it a bit bigger all good that's why we do this check it out on paper before we wreck the wood um, that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button and we'll deal with this in the morning. This paper is rubbish. It looks good, but pencils just dig a hole in it. Whatever. See you later. Thanks.